But in the end, we're, we're gonna, if we have another public forum, the people who own this building are, are, are really upset. And I don't know at what point we're going to come to terms with that. You know, that, so, so that, that, where's that? Where, where's that? And I'm not saying that we can build Hogwarts. But I, but I mean, there's, there's certain elements to those, those structures that are timeless. And, we, and this was from day one. Day one, we talked about that, the timelessness of the building. And, I, and again, I don't, we don't see it, right? There, there, is that, there is that factory look with this beautiful glass beam of light that, that's going to appear. That's wonderful, but it, it's, it's buried amongst these walls of brick. And, and really what it is, it's, a, it's something that wants to be modern, but it's kind of saying, well, it's still New England because that's pitched roofs. And so we are, I do think we're caught in the middle of this a building that wants to be something more modern, and, it, and then maybe we're holding it back. I mean, it, it, it's just that people bought something different. But that's all. Yeah, and, and we have to address that. And the thing is, we're go, let's, let me say this, we're going the opposite way by flattening the roof. We're going the opposite way that people, the feedback that people gave us. So and I love the idea of, of steeper in the front and then slow in the back because it gives that, that curve appeal. But, but that, you know, that's, and again, it's aesthetics, and, and I know in the end, the students that are going to be educated there, it doesn't really affect them that much. But as far as the psyche of the town, and, and the elements that sold this project, that, pe that made people go out and actually sell it to other people, are gone. They're, they're gone. Can I just add one more thing? I think what we're all sort of dancing around is the fact that that pretty picture was just that, a pretty picture. It was one interpretation, and it was constantly presented as that. Okay, so as far as the pitch roof is concerned, I feel that though there were assumptions, we, we had a budget. It was based on a pretty picture. It wasn't based on any square footage takeoffs. These were, you know, large numbers, which is what you do at that point in in design. Okay, we who's to say if we we could be sitting around with that exact building having the same discussion and cutting up this roof. So to me, to say that we, we were so committed with this other design and that somehow this new design you know, doesn't come to grips with that, I feel is absolutely short-sighted of the design process. You know, this, is, this is the process. We know more information now than we did before. Well, that's where the sense of bait and switch comes. Well, because when we interview that's people, but what when we design interview process entails, there is absolutely no bait and switch. It's a process. It's a linear process. Like, like a new building has never been built before, and we had no idea what a building might look, what might cost. We no, just throw something that's up, not the point. Slab a number. It is the, the point. point this, is, this is exactly no, what we sold. That is not the point. To me, it isn't exactly what we sold. Everyone was the told point to is this is one okay. answer. Okay. This is one. All right. Well, we're going to have the answer to it. That's all. And it, it, it did take the design uh, in another direction, and so uh, that is that that is where we we are now. And we we are also dealing uh, with a a design that has to get built, and as as we make every decision. It is in the context of an obligation to the town to create something that can be built for your budget. And uh, that is not, uh, that, that, and that is taking, it, taking us where, uh, to the point we are at now. That's, that's so very important. It, it is. And I, you, know, you guys, it's not, it's not, this is nothing personal. I know this design is like writing, it's like anything else that you put yourself on, it's art. And, I, and, I, and this is not meant to be an attack. It's just that we have half the population who avert their eyes and hold their nose when they drive by the Morgan School every day. And then we're going to, and they, and they went out and they voted because they're like, we can't have our kids in there. You know, there's, there's all kinds of issues in there. And, and they may not even go into school that often. And now we're going to go to them and say, hey, look, we're giving you something that kind of looks like what you already have. Okay, so I, 
well, you guys probably know I almost got thrown off the committee for, you know, having conversations with people in their own living rooms about. So I just want to know what the four. Oh, and the four okay. things that got people to say, all right, I'm going to participate in this and I'm going to go make phone calls and I'm going to, I'm going to get in on this campaign were um, the, thing, the things that really struck people about the story of the Morgan School was the nod to the tradition of the, of the tower. That was something that people were shocked by. They, they didn't know the history and, and that really you know, generated enthusiasm. That, that seems to have been addressed. Um, the, the, and then as far as the concept design goes, that, that classic New England architectural street presence, which everybody accepted. It wasn't, I mean, when we first saw the concept design, it wasn't like everyone was blown away by it. People were, you know, the tobacco farm, we had a little conversation about whether anybody liked it. It's personal preference, right? But it grew out of people. The balcony seating in the gymnasium, because the gym was a big, big selling point is that we had to have two gyms. But, but the idea that there would be, a, there would be balcony seating and concessions off the cafeteria, that, the idea that people could do that since we can't have any drinks in the gym right now and we can't have concessions, like the people on Sunday mornings, that was like, that's like a big deal if you're down there on a Sunday morning. And, and then, um, and then the ability, I mean, what really sold it in the end was the ability to expand in the future. Because p part of the reason we're here is number one, the roof. That was, the, that was what pushed us over the edge. We were, this was a roof committee, and now then it became a building committee, so it's the roof, number one. It's still a roof committee by the listing of the company. Yeah, right. Number two, and yeah, because we, yeah, I don't want to be on the roof committee and when this is all said and done 20 years from now. I want to, we got to do it right, right? So, so two, um, the expansion into that third floor, the foresight, that, that, that idea that that could happen, and, and then Gilbane saying, yeah, that's a possibility. An architect saying it's a possibility, and then somewhere along the line we say, well, you know, or when we interview people for these jobs and we say, hey, you know, is this feasible? You know, is this number any good? Yeah, number's good, number's good. Okay, we'll hire you. And then when the time comes, say, oh, well, no one really thought that through. That's troubling. You know, that, that's, that, that's a, now we're in kind of a troubling spot. And I understand it, I can accept it. All right, maybe we can't build it. We got the pitch roofs that's very expensive, that pitch roof but we can never really build into it. So you're like, okay, well then maybe we shouldn't do it. And now here we are without, without that opportunity to build it into a third story because it's expensive and there's no problem. So those, those are the four okay. things.